Romans 11, beginning verse number 1. It says, I say then, had God cast away His people? God forbid. Because it's been good. Amen? Amen? For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God had not cast away His people which He foreknew. Watch ye not what the Scripture said of Elias. How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed my prophets, thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal, even so then, at this present time, Apostle Paul was referring to about 2,000 years ago. And I am referring today, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, you have been so good. You've been so gracious. You've been so loving. Oh, please, Lord, help us to understand your word tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The amazing grace of the sovereign God. That is my message tonight. The amazing grace of the sovereign God. God's dealing with man from the beginning is always of grace. Amen? Always of grace. And what is that grace? His unmerited favor and His loving kindness to a fallen race. Perhaps the greatest benefit of the fall of man is that we learn of his grace coming out of his unconditional perfect love. A lot of questions have been asked in the past. Why did God allow man to fall? Bakit hinayaan ng Panginoon ang tao na magkasala? And you know what? There is not really a, a ready answer for that. I cannot, in my own limited mind, answer it according to what people would like to hear. But you know what my answer is? I would think that the greatest benefit of the fall of man is that we learn of His grace. Coming out of His unconditional perfect love. Because if man did not fall we will never learn of the grace of God. If man did not fall, we will never learn of the unconditional love of God. God showed His grace to Israel by choosing her to be His own. And through her, the Messiah came. Diba? Yun po. Pinakita po ng Diyos ang biyaya sa Israel. Bilang pagpili sa kanya na chosen nation ng ating Diyos. At doon sa bansang yan, nanggaling din ang tagapagligtas. The Jews rejected Jesus as their Messiah. The Bible says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. The Jews rejected Jesus as their Savior, not realizing that the Lord Jesus is the very epitome of the grace of God. The very example of the grace of God. What can we learn from this? What can we learn from this chapter tonight? But first of all, 
His amazing grace is shown despite the Jews' rejection of the prophets of God and of Jesus. Nakita po ang biyaya ng Panginoon. Amazing grace niya. Nagpakita, naipakita. Kahit na tinanggihan ng mga Hudyo in the past, ang mga propeta ng Diyos. Kahit na tinanggihan pa ng mga Hudyo ang Panginoong Yesu Kristo. His amazing grace was shown. We read that in Romans 11 verses 1 to 4. Kaya nga, ang tanong ha, ni Apostle Paul, had God cast away His people? Kahit na tinanggihan pa ng Israel ang Panginoon, kahit na tinanggihan pa ng Israel ang prophet ng Panginoon, did God cast them away? No, He did not. God forbid. The example during Elijah's time can attest to this. Sabagat nung panahon ni Elijah, wala nang halos sumasamba sa Panginoon. Nung panahon ni Elijah, si Ahab ay nakuha na ni Jezebel. Sumasamba na sa mga Diyos-Diyosan. Sumasamba kay Baal. At dahil dyan, inutusan ng Panginoon si Elijah, you go there and you make a revival in Mount Carmel to find out who the true God is. Ipinakita po yan ni Elijah. Di ba? Ipinakita ni Elijah yan. Yun ang ibig sabihin doon sa 1 Kings 19.18 nung si Samuel, ha, nung si Elijah, pagkatapos maipakita na ang kanyang Diyos ay totoo, pagkatapos na yung Baal priest ay kanyang pinatay, 450 of them, siya ay nagpunta ron sa Brook Chirit. At sinabi niya, Panginoon, nag-iisa na lang ako. Ha? So many times, alam niyo, mayroon akong preaching tungkol dito. You know what the devil does? The devil works before a great revival. And then the devil begins to work too after a great revival. So pagkatapos ng celebration na ito, the devil will work. Do you realize that? He will work against me. The devil will do everything he can to defeat me. Yun ang ginawa eh. Nang Diablo kay Elijah. Can you imagine the success that Elijah had in Mount Carmel? Nakita niya ang kapangirian ng Diyos. Nakita niya kung paano gumawa ang Panginoon. So balit pagkatapos niyan, nandun siya nag-iisa sa Brook Chirit. Ang sabi niya, Lord, nag-iisa na lang ako eh. Wala na akong kampi dito eh. Ano sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya? In 1 Kings 19.18, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal. Hindi ka nag-iisa, Elijah. Kaya alam nyo, pagka minsan nag-iisip kayo, especially kayo mga pastor na napakarami problema, kayo naman ang gumawa nun. Hello? Hello? Kayo naman ang gumawa nun, di ba? Ang Diyos ba nabigyan ng problema sa inyo? Hindi naman eh, kayo eh. Tama ako, mali? Oo. Oh. Ngayon mag-iisa ka, magkukomplain ka. Lord, nag-iisa na lang ako eh. O talagang dapat mag-iisa ka. Talagang dapat mag-iisa ka. Pero alam mo, Panginoon, hindi ganun eh. Sa kanyang biyaya sa atin, sinasabi niya, hindi ka nag-iisa. Mabait pa ang Panginoon eh. Am I right? Hindi ka nag-iisa, mabait pa siya. Maganda pa yung salita niya. Kung ako ang Diyos, ha? may kasamang batok yun eh. Pak! Hindi ka nag-iisa. Unggoy ka pala eh. O dahil lang, hindi ako ang Diyos. Eh. Napakabait ang Panginoon eh. Am I right? Complain ka ng complain. Ang Panginoon nandun pa rin eh. Complain ka ng complain. Ang, ang biyaya ng Panginoon nandun pa rin eh. Am I right? Ano man ang ginagawa mo sa pagkakamali mo, sa foolishness mo, sa 
Sa kapalpakan mo, nandun pa rin ang Panginoon. Hindi na wala ang biyaya niya eh. Still there, folks. His amazing grace is shown despite the Jews rejection of the prophets of God and of Jesus. Number two, His amazing grace is distinct and opposite of all human efforts even if it is done in debt of gratitude. Please take note of the, of the statement here. Okay? Please take note. Gusto ko maintindihan nyo itong statement na ito. Ha? Huh? His amazing grace is distinct and opposite of all human efforts even if it is done in debt of gratitude. You can read verses 5 to 10. In verse number 6, uh, if we continue on reading verse 5, even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace... Then, is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. I would like you to understand the parallelism here of grace and faith. Grace and faith. I remember what my brother preached here many Sundays back about faith in action. Remember that? That if you truly have the faith in you, then that faith will show forth by its work. Sabi ni James, faith without works is dead. Correct? Hindi salvation yun, ha? The salvation. Bakit? Because the next verse says, Show me your faith without your works. I will show you my faith by my works. He didn't say, I will show you my faith with my works. No. I will show you my faith by my works. Therefore, when the Bible speaks of works, it is always the effect of faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. The effect of faith. Works is the effect of faith. It is not vice versa. It is not work and then faith. It is not faith plus works. Kaya nga alam nyo, hindi tayo pwede magkasundo ng Pentecostalism eh. Do you know that? Because we Baptists believe that once saved, always saved. Do you realize that? We believe in the security of the believer. Oh, we do not believe in losing our salvation. Do you know why? Because if you lose your salvation after you sin against God, after receiving Christ, then you go back to the Galatian cult. Huh? Anong sabi ni Paul sa Galatia? Are you going to start by faith and then continue by works? Can be, folks. Salvation will always be by faith because it is by grace. Kaya nga nakalagay si Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, di ba? For by grace are ye saved through faith. Faith and grace always go together. Do you know that a lot of Christian churches you can always, if you are, if you are really sensitive in the doctrines of grace, you will always be able to know if a certain Christian church, for example, is teaching faith plus works. When you begin to teach faith plus works, it is not grace. Very clear yun sa binasa natin. Di ba? Very clear sa verse number 6. If by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. 
but if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Even after you are saved, even after you are saved, your work and your offerings are only accepted by God through His grace. Kaya huwag tayo magmamalaki na ang laki ng offering ko dito. Ha? Ha? Nung araw, may mga evangelical churches, mga Baptist churches, kapag nagre-raise ng pera, open yan. Okay, we're going to raise about 10 million today. All right, so we are going to ask you people, how much are you going to give? Somebody will stand up. I'm giving one million. Tapos titingin siya sa isang member na kalaban niya. Para bang ikaw ano? Tatayo naman yung isa. 1.5 million. Para bang ano? Parang auction. Di ba? Parang auction. You know what? That's not great. That's work. Look at our offerings. Our first foot offering. It is not announced what you're giving because that is between you and God. You are giving that offering not because you can afford to give. You are giving that offering because the Lord gave you the grace to give. Amen. You are serving God because God is giving you the grace to serve. That's why don't be proud of what you do for God. Don't be proud by saying, well, you know what? I helped this church be built. Yung limang poste dito, ako gumasta niyan. That is not grace anymore. Please take note of that, folks. His amazing grace is distinct and opposite of all human efforts, even if it is done in debt of gratitude. First of all, salvation is according to the election of grace. Oh, doon na makakaiba ngayon yung Arminian, di ba? Saka yung Calvinist, am I right? But let me tell you this. We believe in the sovereign grace of God, we are not Calvinists. If ever I would give credit to a man that thought about election and sovereign grace, it is Paul. I am not a Calvinist. I am a Paulinian. Why? Because Apostle Paul is the apostle of the grace of God. Apostle Paul is the apostle of the election of grace. Hindi nyo maaaring maunawaan yung election for this time. I will be able to preach that later on. As we go along, you're going to understand it. But listen, you did not choose God. God chose you. You do not have the ability to choose God. Why? Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, you are dead in trespasses and in sins. Ephesians 2, 1. Right? And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Tanong, pagpatay ka ba? Nakakapili ka? No, you cannot. You're dead. You might be alive in the flesh, but you are dead in the spirit. That's why you need to be quickened. Tatlong bagay yan na kinakailangan maunawaan ng maraming mga so-called Christians today. Of course, if you are not used to listening to deep doctrines, you will never understand. Tatlo. Awaken, enlighten, quicken. The word awaken does not mean that you're saved. The word enlightened does not mean that you're saved. It is only when you are quickened that you are saved. Now, ano ibig sabihin 
You might be awakened to the truth that you're a sinner. And you accept it. Am I right? Pero hindi ka naman nasisave doon. Diba? You might be enlightened that because you're a sinner, you're going to hell. You cannot save yourself. Am I right? But the only way that you are saved is when the Holy Spirit of God quicken you from being dead in sin and make you alive in Jesus Christ. Give you the new nature. By what? By repenting of your sins and accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. Putting your faith and trust upon Jesus alone. Jesus alone. Jesus alone. Jesus alone. Jesus alone. Secondly, before that, tina natin yung John 15, 16 para makita nyo that you did not choose God. Ano nakalagay sa John 15, 16? Ha? Huh? Ye have not chosen me. Sabi na Panginoon. But I have chosen you and ordained you. Oo nga. Tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa puso mo. But listen, it was the Holy Spirit that spoke to your heart about that. Kaya napapansin nyo, pag ako nag-pre-preach, I would, I would pray, I would ask the Lord, Lord, please give understanding to everyone. It is not me. Kapag ako nag-preach sa inyo at hindi kumuha ang Holy Spirit, anong ginawa ko? I am just an orator. Nag-orate lang ako. Magaling lang ako. Kaya nga sinasabi natin palagi, no? ano ang pagkakaiba ng, ng preacher na magaling mag-preach sa preacher na talagang kinakasiya ng Panginoon. Pagkatapos ng preaching niya, you know, kakamayan siya ng isang member, kasabihin niya, Preacher, you really preach great. Pero alam mo yung preaching na ang Panginoon ang siyang kumukusa, nakikipag-usap, kasabihin ng member, Preacher, you really preach about God. I begin to understand God more because you preach. I think that all of you here can discern who are preachers who speak about themselves and who are preachers who speak about God alone. Number two, grace if mixed with work is no longer grace. Pag sinabi natin, grace is divine favor. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is loving kindness. Bakit? Kasi hindi ka tanggap-tanggap ang work mo eh. Hindi kailangan ng Panginoon ng work mo para ka maligtas. Kanina, andito yung si Secretary General ng Congress. Lawyer yun eh. Nakalimutan ko nga, bugato siya eh. Remember, I also spoke about law. What law does and what grace does. He understood that. I was watching him, he was listening very well when I spoke about law and I began to speak about grace. And you know what? When I gave the invitation, he was the first one that came forward to receive Christ. We were talking while we were eating and he was telling me, you know what, Bishop? Really begin to understand what grace is. We Baptist people are the people of the grace of God. Number three, there's a warning to those who continue to reject the grace of God. By what? By hanging to their works. Kaya nga sinasabi ko, napaka-simple ng salvation, di ba? Sabi niya, so simple. Yet, ang sabi ng maraming tao, ganun lang ba yun? Have you heard that? When you witness? Ganun lang ba? I will just repent of my sins. Madali lang yun ah. I will just accept Christ into my heart. Napakadali niya. Yun lang pa ang gagawin ko. Wala na akong gagawin iba. Wala na. 
Wala na. Because the moment you include your work in your salvation, then that is not salvation by grace. Number three, His amazing grace shifted salvation to the Gentiles. Romans 11, 11 to 16. Tinan niyo may gaya. Anong sabi sa Romans 11, 11 to 16? I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? They, he spoke of the Jews. Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. I thank God that when salvation was given to the Jews, the Jews rejected salvation first. So what happened? When the Jews rejected that salvation, then God says, okay, I go to the Gentiles. May parable ng Panginoon dyan eh. Di ba? May parable ng Panginoon eh. Ano yung parable na yun? You know when the Lord told them, okay, go out into the highways. Di ba? Invite those, those people for my wedding. Ang unang inipitahan mga hudyo yun eh. Invite those for wedding. Yung mga hudyo, yung mga galing, yung mayayaman, yung mga special, yung mga chosen ng Panginoon. But they refused to come. Nobody came. Am I right? And they came back and said, Lord, nobody would like to come to your wedding. So ano sinabi na Okay, nobody wants to come to my wedding. All right, you go to the lame, to the cripple, you go to the blind, you go to the palsied, you go to those that are not worthy. You invite them to my wedding. You know who those are? Those are Benny Abante. Those are you. We are the cripple. We are the lame. We are the blind. We are the outscoring of the earth. And God invited us by His grace to be saved. His amazing grace shifted salvation to the Gentiles. Alam niyo ba ang pinakamayabang na tao sa buong mundo? Mga Ujo. You know why? Because they think they're right. Number one, they're God's chosen nation. Uy, pinili kami ng Diyos. Sila ang pinakamayabang. Pumunta ka sa Israel. How many have been to Israel? One, I've been there many, many years back. 40 years ago. Alright? Hindi na ngayon. Pumunta ka sa Israel. Hindi ka papansinin ng Ujo. May yabang sila. You talk about the Lord Jesus Christ? No. Jesus is a call to us. Asabihin nila. You know, He is a Jew, but you don't accept Him. They're like that, folks. They are the most proud people in the world. Do you think it's the Arabs who are proud? No, they're not proud. It's the Jews who are proud. You see? Number one, because of Israel's rejection to envy them. Ha? Pinahintulot ng Panginoon at tanggihan ng Israel ang Messiah. To what? Upang ingitin sila. To envy them. Okay? To provoke them to jealousy according to verse 11. Kita niya? To provoke them to jealousy. Number two. Brought riches to the Gentiles. But when the Jews believe in Jesus as Messiah, then it will enrich the world. Nakalagay the verse number 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. 
Kung tinanggap kagad ang mga Hudyo, mga Hudyong pinagpala ng Diyos, mga Hudyong pinili ng Diyos, wala kayong makikitang Hudyong mahirap, folks. Wala. Kaya yaman ang mga yan. Ang sabi sa akin, nung araw, ha? Tatlumpong tao lamang ang may control ng currency ng mundo. 30 people controls the currency of the world. And they're all from Europe. Half of them are Jews. Kaya nga, alam nyo, ang mga Hudyo walang pakialam sa oil ng Arabs eh. Why? Because money can buy it anyway. Oh, ayaw nyo kayong pagpila ng oil? Diretso? Bibili kami sa US. Oh, bibili kami sa England. Bibili kami sa Switzerland. Ayaw nyo kayong pagpila? Okay lang. Pero ang pinag-uusapan dyan, listen, kapag dinisight ng mayayamang Hudyo na ibaksak ang currency, babaksak ang currency. It depends on the Jews, folks. Ganon sila kayaman. Pero alam nyo, dahil sa mayaman sila, tinanggihan nila ang kaligtasan ng Panginoon. Di ba ganun ng mga mayayaman? Ah, mayaman ako eh. Kinikwento mo kanina. Di ba? Ah, mayaman ako. Hindi ko na kailangan ng Diyos. May pera ako. Hindi ko kailangan ng Diyos. Oo. Pero later on, malalaman nila na wala pala magagawa ang kayamanan pag nagkasakit sila. Wala pala magagawa ang kayamanan pag nawala na yung mga anak. Wala, palang, wala na magagawa ang kayamanan pag broken home na. Am I right? Wala na magagawa ang kayamanan kapag nagkaroon ng mga kalamidad. Wala na magagawa. And the problem is, kahit na mga anak ng Diyos, nauhulog pa rin sa snare ng pera. Do you realize that? Alam nyo, members, kung kayo nahuhulog pa sa isner ng pera, obserbahan nyo na lang ako. Ako. Sapagkat kaya kong kumuha ng pera na hindi nyo kaya eh. Pero hindi ko nahuhulog eh. Am I right? Sapagkat ito pa rin ang batayan ng buhay ko eh. Hindi ang pera. Ito pa rin eh. Hindi nyo lang alam ang kapangyarihan ng minority leader. Hindi ko na sabihin sa inyo, baka ma-offend pa kayo eh. Ako na, offend ako eh. Akala niyo ba ang pera nasa negosyo? Wala. Ang pera nasa pelikula? Wala. Ang pera nasa gobyerno. Kapag ang Pangulo ng Pilipinas, kapag ikaw ay malaking businessman, kahit napakayaman mo, lumaban ka sa Pangulo. Pag ikaw binalik ng Pangulo, tapos ka. Wala akong pakailam kung ikaw ang ABS-CBN. Wala akong pakialam kung ikaw si Lucio Tan. Wala akong pakialam kung ikaw si Ramon Ang. Wala akong pakialam kung kontrolada mo ang pera ng Pilipinas. Pero kaya kang gibain ng taong kontrolado ang kapangyarihan ng Pilipinas. Just imagine, if despite all the riches and the wealth of Israel, they disregarded all that, and they humbled themselves, and accepted Jesus as their Messiah and Savior, it becomes the fullness of the world. And they will be a great country. Just imagine, no? Alam mo yung grace ng Panginoon sa Israel? 
kahit mayabang yan, kahit hanggang ngayon nire-reject yan. Have you ever seen the video about the testimony ng mga evangelists that are witnessing to Jews? I don't know if you have seen that, pero nakikita mo yung mga sagot ng mga Hudyo? Oh, we don't believe in your Bible. We're the Old Testament people. We don't believe in your Messiah. We have our own. Nahihiyabang sila eh. Now just imagine ha, ang biyaya ng Panginoon sa kanila. Kahit mayabang, kahit nahirajek ang Panginoon sa Kristo, ha, napakaliit na bansa sa paligid na malaking bansa, hindi matalo-talo ng sinumang Arab nation. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Hmm? Yung Iran, gustong gusto ng sugurin ng Israel. Ano ba naman ang Israel sa Iran? Pag compare mo yung, yung lupain ng Israel sa Iran, parang hinulog mo lang yan ha? na isang patak na tubig. Ganun kalaki ang lupa ng Iran. Oo. Pag binag-usapan ng armed forces ng Israel, ha? napakaliit. Okay, napakaliit compare sa Iran. Pero bakit hindi masugod ng Iran ang Israel? Bakit hindi? Pinoprotect na pa rin ang Panginoon eh. Yun ang grace. Tulad mo na napakatigas ng ulo, tulad mo na sumusuway sa Panginoon, tulad mong ayaw maglingkod, pero tinatawag ka pa rin niya, nauunawa ano pa rin ang salita ng Diyos. Grace yun eh. Hello? Grace yun. Nandiyan ka, nakaupo ka, hindi kita kilala, hindi ko alam ang ginagawa mo, alam mo ang ginagawa mo, alam mo ang kalokohan mo sa buhay, alam mo, you're rejecting this preaching tonight, pero alam mo, buhay ka pa din eh. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Andiyan ka pa rin. Grace ng Panginoon yun. Pero ako, ang warning ko sa iyo, do not abuse the grace of God. Thirdly, the example of the offerings of first fruit is given. In verse number 15, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Who are the first fruits? Who are the first fruits of Israel that believe? Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, they were the first fruit. They trusted God. They believed God. Pero yung mga anak, hindi na. You see? Third, fourthly, number D, letter D. His amazing grace joined the believing Gentiles to the believing Jews. Ano pa yung amazing sa Tagalog? Ang kamangha-manghang biyaya ng Diyos ang siyang nagsama sa mga sumampalatayang hintil at sa mga sumampalatayang hudyo. Babasahin natin yung Romans 11, verse 17 to 24. Kung gentile ka na mayabang, ma-offend ka. Bakit? Sabi sa verse 17, And if some of the branches broken off, and thou, sino kausap ni Paul? The Roman Gentiles, mga Gentiles, and thou, ikaw Gentiles, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, 
Thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branch is broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin nun, huwag kang mag-ibang sa mga hudyo sabagat ligtas ka. Ang totoo niyan, ang hudyo ang good olive tree. Tayo ang wild olive tree. Kinuha tayo ng Panginoon. Ginawa tayong good olive tree. Ano naman nyo? Pinagsama tayo sa mga hudyong sumasampalataya na good olive tree, tayong wild olive tree, at nagkaisa ang mga Gentile na katulad natin na sumampalataya, ang mga hudyong sumampalataya. Grace. That's the grace of God. The, number one, the wild olive tree grafted to the good olive tree. Number two, the promise also given that those Jews who reject can still be grafted in when they believe. Merong ilang na say save na ujo ngayon. Kakaunti lang. Kaya nga binanggit ni Apostle Paul yung remnant according to the election of grace. Mas maraming gudyo ang masesave sa tribulation period. Hindi ngayon. Hindi ngayon. Alright? Ngayon, kausapin mo mga hudyo, they will not believe you. Thirdly, the attitude then of the Gentile believers should be that of humility and graciousness. Humility, sapagkat kahit tayo wild olive tree, napansin tayo ng Panginoon, grace eh. Amen? Wala tayong dapat ipagmayabang. Maaaring pinagpala ka ng Panginoon, lalo kang dapat maging humble. Do you know what the blessings of God do to me? It humbles me more. Lalo akong pinagpapala ng Panginoon, lalo akong nahihiya sa Kanya. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the wild olive tree grafted to the good olive tree itong taong itong Gentile na wala pag-asa ng kalangitan, diligtas ng ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo. Ha? Pinagpala niya ng napakaraming pagpapala. So meron na ba akong pagkakato magyabang? Ha? Pwede na ba akong magyabang o pinagpala ako ng Diyos? No. You have no right to be proud. Amen ba? And don't be proud because you're MBBE. Be proud of the grace of God in your life. Alam nyo, kahit sino ka, kahit pasaway ka pang MBBE, pag nagpunta ka sa isang Baptist church, pag nakilala mo yung sarili mo, MBBE po ako. Sino yung pastor mo? Si Pastor Abante po. Naku, bida ka eh. Oo. Eh dito, hindi ka bida. Eh, doon ko na lang. Dibita ka ron eh. So, the attitude of us, tayo mga Gentiles, tayo mga walang kwentang tao, kung hindi sa biyaya ng Panginoon, magiging walang kwenta pa rin tayo. Amen ba? All right. Ha? Huh? Ang attitude natin should be a what? Humility and graciousness. Wala akong pwedeng pagmayabang. Number four, the realization of the severity and the goodness of God. His grace should not be taken lightly. His grace should not be taken lightly. In verse 22, ang sabi, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee. What? Goodness. Doon sa mga hudyo na mayabang, na ayaw man ang palataya, severity ng Panginoon. Pero doon sa mga Gentile, 
na nag-humble down at nanampalataya the goodness of God. And what's that? Grace. Grace. The number five, letter E. His amazing grace is the assurance that God will fulfill His covenant with Israel. Kahit ano pang Israel, because of His covenant of grace, God will fulfill His covenant with Israel. Ibig sabihin, pag ang Panginoon ng ako, tutuparin niya. Am I right? Kapag nag ka ng Bible College, anong pag-aaralan niyo? Meron doong Adamic Covenant. Merong Noahic Covenant. Merong Abrahamic Covenant. Merong Davidic Covenant. Lahat ng mga covenant na yan is absolute. Hindi yan dependent kapag yung David nagwala. Why? Because the covenant of God is absolute and eternal. So nakita nyo naman ang mga hari, di ba? Nakita nyo ang buhay ni, buhay ni David, right? Nakita nyo yung buhay ni Solomon. Nagbago ba ang covenant ng Panginoon? Hindi. Nakita nyo yung mga hari ng, ng uh, Judah. Nagbago ba ang covenant ng Panginoon? Hindi. Ano yung covenant ng Panginoon? That in the millennial reign, the Jews will be reigning with Christ as the king of the Jews. Can you imagine that covenant? His amazing grace is the assurance that God will fulfill His covenant with Israel. Number one, here is implied our personal salvation and the salvation of the nation of Israel. Personal salvation and the national salvation of Israel. Number two, God allows unbelief for them to realize God's mercy. God's mercy. Number three, God's sovereignty dictates that God never changes His will. God's sovereignty dictates that God never changes His will. Kaya alam nyo, ano man ang problema ang dinadaanan ko, at sino man ang gumawa sa akin ng problema, ito pinangawakan ko eh. Hindi nagbabago ang kalooban ng Diyos eh. Amen? Nagbabago ang tao, pero hindi nagbabago ang kalooban ng Diyos. Pag sinabi ng Panginoon sa akin, pagpapalain kita, wala akong pakialam kung maging pasaway ka. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Ang pagpapala ng Panginoon still stand. Pag sinabi sa akin ng Panginoon, pagpapalain kita, kahit iwanan niyo ako dito, ang pagpapala ng Panginoon still stand. At, kagamitin ko yung salita ng Pilipino, malas mo pag iniwan mo ako. Hello? I'm saying this with the word of God in my hand. Malas mo pag iniwan mo ako. I'm not saying this with pride. I'm not saying this with, you know, nasa akin ang no. I'm saying this only because of God's grace in my life. Because God is always true to His promise. Because God is always true to His commitment. Because God is always true to His covenant. In conclusion, God's amazing grace should cause us to be amazed of His wisdom. And to give Him all the glory. Romans 11, 33 to 36. Anong sabi ni Paul? Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. 
How unsearchable are His judgment and His ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been His counselor? Or who hath first given to Him? And it shall be recompensed unto Him again. For of Him and through Him and to Him are all things of Him. Through Him, to Him are all things. To, him, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Apostle Paul remembered the words of the Old Testament in Psalm 92 and verse 5. Ano sabi? O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. How great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. In Jeremiah 23 verse number 18, For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word. Who hath marked his word and heard it. In Job 41.11. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him. Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. Ang sabi ng Panginoon. Psalm 92.5. Jeremiah 23.18. Job 41.11. In speaking of God's wisdom. And do you know what God's wisdom is? It is His ability to perform. Now you better listen, you young people there. And don't be stupid. You listening to me? Now, some of you here will not understand what I'm trying to say. But you listen. Hindi ko naman sinasabi mo unawaan niyo lahat eh. Ang sinasabi ko makinig ka. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? You're not listening to Benny but you're listening to God's word. Some of you young people and even some of you adults Meron mga pastor na. Kayong mga ibang pastor diyan. Naunawaan niyo ba 'to? Ha? The very reason why the blessings of God does not come to you because you do not understand the grace of God. You listen. When you speak of God's wisdom, God's wisdom means what? His ability to perform. Ano ibig sabihin? His ability to what? To perform. That's the wisdom of God. And His knowledge. And what is the meaning of God's knowledge? His perfect comprehension of all things. He understands everything. He comprehends everything. There is nothing hidden from Him. And not only that, He has the ability to perform everything He said. When Paul remembered those, he was so amazed. He was so overwhelmed. Kaya ang sabi niya sa verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. You know, before I came here, I was reading this chapter. I was overwhelmed myself. And I prayed there in my office, ask Lord, please, I do not properly understand everything that you said here. Help me to understand. I do realize that we have different kind of audience here. Mga bago mananampalataya, mga matagal nang mananampalataya, mga immature na mananampalataya, mga mature na mananampalataya, na mga mananampalataya na alam ang doktrina, 
mananampalatayang hindi masyadong alam ang doktrina, ang mga batang ito. Hindi naman yung naunawaan sa sabi ko eh. You realize that? By what do I, why do I want them to sit here? Because I want them to listen. Because one day, they will understand. Ba't ko alam? Ganun ako nung araw eh. Ganun ako nung bata ako eh. Naligtas ako, eight years old pa lang ako eh. Ang tatay ko, tunayin ako, maupo ka sa harap. Makinig ka. Hindi ko naunawaan yan. In fact, kung ako yung naligtas, hindi ko nga naunawaan yung preaching ng pastor eh. Tinanong ko lang ibig sabihin ng salvation eh. Sa mother ko eh. Pinaunawa niya sa akin eh. Pero alam nyo, pinagsyagaan ko. Diyan sa harap. Doon ng mga batang ito. Pinagsyagaan ko maupo dyan. Kahit na hindi ko naunawaan. Why? Because one day I know that God will reveal that to me. That's why I am able to preach to you this doctrine. Ang sabi ng mga mga pantas, mga mga talino, I can preach for one hour, I can preach for two hours. You only get 20 minutes of what I preach. But you know what? He's saying that without the Holy Spirit. Am I right? Oh, human mind will tell you. 20 minutes lang ang capacity mo para makaunawa. Pero look, we have the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that gives understanding kahit bata ka pa. Kung mauunawaan lang nyo ang preaching na ito, ngayon, kayong mga nasa gawain, pagpapalain ng Diyos ang gawain ninyo. Kung mauunawaan nyo, pero kung hindi pa rin, wala na akong magagawa rin. So, anong gusto nyo pag-usapan natin? Pepe and Pilar? One plus one equals two? O pag-usapan natin ang malalalim na katuruan ng Biblia upang later maunawaan mo ang ibig sabihin nito sapagkat ang Espiritu ng Panginoon ang nagbibigay ng pagkaunawa. Nais ba natin na maging katulad ng ibang mga Baptist Church na alam ko na napakaingay. Merong mga Baptist Churches Tinatapon pa yung panyuron sa ere. You know, di ba? Ah, at nauunahan yung preacher sa pag-amen. Yung pastor hindi pa nakakapag-preach. nag amen na yung... You know? nag amen na. Amen! Di pa, ha? Oh. Yung pastor, wala pa sa nasabi. Sinasabi na ng member, Praise on, pastor! Wala pa sa nasabi. Not here, folks. You say amen because that word struck you. You say amen because those statements struck your heart. You say amen because you're convicted. You say amen because you learned something you have not learned before. Or you're quiet there because you're almost half asleep and you do not understand anything what we're talking about here. If Apostle Paul was so amazed, kung si Apostle Pablo po ay humanga na overwhelm. Ano yung overwhelm sa Tagalog? Na mangha. Ganun din yun eh. Yung amazed, na mangha, overwhelm, na mangha din. 
Ha? Kung si Apostle Paul nabanggit niya, nung pinag-uusapan yung grace, nung pinag-uusapan yung election, pinag-uusapan ng kabaitan ng Panginoon, ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, Oh, the death of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. Tagalugin mo nga, pare. Alam po. Tagalog po. Okay, tagalugin mo. Dahil na susuya ako sa mga tanga dito eh. You have the Holy Spirit and you're stupid? Go ahead. O kalaliman ng mga kayamanan ng karunungan at kaalaman ng Diyos. O hindi mo na kailangan ng Holy Spirit. Tinagalog na eh. Tuloy mo. Hindi masaliksik ang mga hatol niya. How unsearchable are His judgments. Hindi masaliksik o sa ibang Tagalog, hindi maapuhap. Mm-hmm. Yun, ah. Yung lirip, iba. iba pa. Hindi malirip. Yung po yung ano, His ways past finding out. Ah. Ano yung His ways past finding out? At hindi malirip ang kanyang yung, mga kapamaraanan. Hindi malirip ang kanyang mga kapamaraanan. kapamaraan. His ways past finding out. Alam ko naman, yun ang niya eh. Oh no. Di ba? Alam ko naman ang ginawa niyo his ways past finding out. Am I right? Ngayon, narinig niyo na. Hindi malirit. Hindi maunawaan. It's beyond our understanding. Kaya may faith eh. Hello? You do not need to understand. Just believe. Faith does not mean you fully understand. Do you understand how the world was created? Explain that to me. Scientist, come on, explain that to me. Ikaw, kum laude ka, di ba? Explain to me how the world was created. You accept that by faith. That God created that from nothing. Explain to me how God can create something from nothing. You do not understand that until you accept it by faith. Naunawaan niyo ba? So, kung itong si Apostle Paul na mangha, kung itong si Apostle Paul bumilip, yun na lang, bumilip. Di ba? Kung itong si Apostle Paul talagang nagulat siya ha? sa mga bagay na ito, eh di lalo na tayo. E di lalo tayo mamangha sa biyaya ng Diyos. Na itong si Bene Abante, napakaliit, makasalanan, patungong impyerno, dahil ang sa biyaya ng Panginoon, He reached out to me and saved my soul. And made me His child. E nakausap ko rin kayo, kahit nakatingin ako rito. Okay? Kala nyo, hindi ko na kayo naalala eh. When we think of all these things, pag naisip mo lahat ng mga bagay na ito, our salvation, ang kaligtasan natin, the wonderful things the Lord has done for us, lahat ng mga gandang bagay na ginawa ng Panginoon sa atin, His patience, ang kanyang pagkitiis, His goodness, ang kanyang kabaitan. His kindness. His faithfulness. And most of all, His enduring love. Would you not also be amazed? All of this, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, enduring love, all of this can be defined in this word, His amazing grace. Yeah. 
सोचता है Every head be bowed. Every eye be closed. Kahit ako, may mga pagkakataon. Hindi ko nagagawa ang dapat kong gawin para sa aking Panginoon. Pero napakasobra at napakalaki ng kabaitan niya sa akin. Kayo. Kayo. Unang-una, kinakausap ko ang mga lingkod ng Diyos. Kayo. Kayo ng mga pastor, kayo ng mga preachers. Kayo. Anong klaseng example ang binibigay natin sa mga members natin? At kayo mga members, ordinary members. How, do you, how did you understand the preaching tonight? How? Paano mo pwedeng i-apply sa buhay mo ngayong gabi? Ang narinig mo. I will leave that to you tonight. It's your choice. It's your call. If ever God spoke to your heart tonight through this message, if ever the Lord made you to understand what grace is all about, if ever in your life you know who you are, you know who God is, and you know what must be done. your call. 